Hello, friends. Hello, hello. How is everybody today? Welcome to week 21 of the Basement Chronicles here at L&J Goods. We, um, we are going to just wait for a few people to hop on. Um, remember that if you do not already subscribe, we love it. If you would hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and please, by all means, leave a comment. We will answer any of your questions um, as we're live, or I'll come back to them a little bit later. But man, can you believe it's week 21 already? And I don't know about you guys, but being a creative, we end up with... Um, I end up with a lot of unfinished projects, you know, so when I go live and I start something and then I don't always finish it live or we have to paint the backs of it or we have to, you know, do fuss and fiddle with it, um, it happens all the time and I end up with a whole bunch of unfinished projects. Now, my husband would say, why don't you do one project from start to finish? Yes. <laughs> But I'm sorry, my mind doesn't does not work like that. If you're like me, you know we have got like 12 projects in our minds, and we've got to like schedule them out, and we start on one because then while that's drying, we can move on to another one. You know the story. That's what happens when we are creatives, and especially when we are creatives in business. Many years ago, when I was a doll maker, oh my goodness, how many years ago was that? Um, we, I would literally have rows and rows of legs and arms all stuffed and ready to go, but it didn't stop me from then moving on to um, sewing the dresses, for example. I had, to, I had to make good use of my time. But it can also stress me out just a little bit, and let me know if you can relate to that, um, because I need to kind of clear up some of my unfinished stuff and move it along before I can really tackle like any of this stuff. So today I thought we're going to finish working on this mirror that we started last week on the Basement Chronicles. I'm sorry I can't see your comments to know who's there and saying hello. Um, but um, but yeah, Megan will be with us in just a second. Unless, JR, you can see, can you see any comments up in the the video there or in the screen? No, I can't. You can't. Okay. Nope. All right. Well, she'll catch up with you in a second. Anyway, um, last week we started this really cool little mirror makeover. Remember, this was the top of an old dresser, and we flipped it upside down. My dear husband created a shelf for it. And at the end of Basement Chronicles, I kind of alluded to putting a mold, like putting molds on this piece. And so I wanted to show you that and then, uh, and how I attached them. And then we'll move on to using some glazes, not only over this piece, but also over this beautiful inlay table that has been down here for a month that I've just needed to finish. But I'm gonna show you how we'll use um, antiquing glaze from Fusion, Debbie's DIY Dark and Decrepit glaze, and we're gonna use some, um, this new olive antiquing gel from uh, Pentark. And um, I will kind of show you how I go about that. So we're gonna talk first about this beautiful little mirror, and it's so pretty on its own, but I really felt like it needed something to zhuzh it up. We talked about using uh, pieces of a transfer, but I wanted a little more, um, a little more depth and interest. So um, I have actually, I, I purchased this particular vintage trim piece. Um, in Michigan last year at an antique store. I was rooting around in their basement storage, one of my favorite places to go, and I found several pieces. And then I had a friend of mine actually cast these molds. So um, if you're interested, let us know. Um, we can cast these for you, but um, I don't have a mold, no. Um, 
but um, I just I love the detail you in mean, them. You do have a mold. I have the mold, but, mold, but I'm not selling a mold. Yes. No, I I can cast these furniture trim pieces if that's something you're interested in. Let us know. We'll see how that goes. So anyway, what I did, I have this one glued here already, and my dear husband already started this process. Ooh, I've got a lot of glue there. So. Um, I just didn't trust that this resin piece would stick alone with glue. It's it's pretty beefy. It's a, it's a thick piece. So I wanted to really make sure that that's going to stay on there. So what I did is I kind of traced out the area where my mold is going to sit. Hi Cheryl. And and I know that's about where I'm going to drill through. Uh, a pilot hole so that later I can screw in from the back after I get this glued on. So what I'll do is um, I don't want to screw it on this table top, no. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to bring it off the edge a little bit. That's pretty stable. Pretty stable. stable and enough. what's that? Stable enough. Stable enough. And then I'm going to drill down through my little my little areas that I marked out. I, I I wanted to choose like two of these rosettes and, and you can see how thick these are, but I wanted two of them so I can dr drill two screws up through the back. So you I just kind of- What is that made of? It's resin. Wow. Yeah, isn't it cool? It's resin. And then I'm gonna do another one here. So my pilot holes are drilled and then what I want to do is um, flip it over. Make sure this is tight here. <laughs> Megan, do we have any questions or no questions? Anybody? We got lots of friends here. Wonderful. All right, I am looking for where is that countersink bit? There it is. This is a countersink bit. I don't want my the, the back of my screw head um, sitting against the back of this. I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but um, in fact, I may pass on that right now just because this one, I just glued it probably about 20 minutes ago. I use Type Bond Thick and Quick. I don't want to. Type Bond Quick and Thick, available at Undergrowth. But what you can do is if you have a very flat back, you can use a countersink bit and come back up through the back side, and it's going to gouge out a little hole. It'll sink a little hole so that your screw head goes right into it. Again, I'm not going to do that right now because I don't want to flip this over just yet. Yeah. Actually, maybe I should flip it over and put some screws in it. How about that? JR, I just might need you to help me hold some things in place here. How did I know that was coming? Oh, you just knew, didn't you? That's okay. All right. So I'm going to hold this. Yes, I am dripping glue. I use a lot of glue. I always use a lot of glue. Anything that we can... No questions? No hellos? No. Yes, lots of hellos. I just don't want to no. interrupt okay. you for every process. hello. We forgot to pre-drill the resin bit here. Lisa, what's going on at your farmer's market? Thank you, Katie. I mean, Arlene Duff. I get so confused with your name here. I don't think it did. I didn't feel it on my finger. <laughs> so what JR did is he drilled through our existing holes and into the back of the resin piece. Now that's going to hold that nice and tight. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, I did it upside down. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> that sounds lovely, Lisa. All right, let me take this back out. <laughs> what you get. Plunk. Alrighty. I want the swag to be pointing down. That would be better. And then I'll put this one. This one's going to go here. Kind of right up, up to it. Wow, I get myself in the worst mess of swag. <laughs> Did you, by any chance, happen to add the German grain stencils to inventory? I did not, but you can go ahead and do that. Okay. I have 50 more coming. Okay, let's flip this over. Get my screw in there again. Hey, Melissa. Hey, Patty. Hi, Mary Jo. Hopefully, I can do this. Drill another hole. You want me to hold it for you? If you can, that would be really helpful. I think I can reach my hands if I'll be on camera. This chair, like you said, is out of here. What I need you to do is hold the mold down here so in place. But like even clamp right underneath here. There you go, two sides. Beautiful. Yep. Okay. I'm going to drill another pilot hole. Oh, I'm so scared. Mom. Don't be scared. scared. It's all right. It really is. Hold it. And let's get this you guy imagine in. imagine if you drill through my hand on camera? It would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? There we go. This screw with a wire around it. <laughs> that won't work. All right, now we got it in there. Wow, what a process, right? All right, what about the other one? Do you want me to see? No, 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 no. You know what? Oh. I am so disappointed. I literally. You guys. Um, we do not sell a German green sack bag, just the stencil. I think what happened is it shifted and we're holding it. So a nice idea would be to actually use a clamp on here, right? Well, I can hold it for you. Well, it's just that we can't, it can't shift at all. Yeah, there's some people who would like to see how you cast a mold. I, I, do, I don't make them. I have no idea. I don't, I don't do them. I have somebody else do them for me that I, I pay someone to do them. A professional mold caster? Pretty much, yeah. Yep, that is the truth. All right, we're gonna try this again. Oh, you guys, I'm so glad you're sticking this out with me. I think it's kind of sharp and pointy to hold on to. Yeah, parts. it is. Oh no. Are you breaking a sweat? A little bit. Yeah. Well, the quick and thick's not being that quick, is it? No, it's not. Mm -mm. All right, you know what? If my husband was here, we would have this. Do you want me to call him back? No. Why did he run out of here right when we need him? I know. I know. 
Sandy, uh, happy note, loves her German green sex stencils and uses them on a stool and pillows. She's going to do what? She loves the German green sex stencils and she uses them on a stool and pillows. <gasps> nice! Oh my gosh, thank you for sharing that. Let's talk about that. Wait, Stephanie, hold on, Stephanie's got a idea. She said, how about glue first, screw second? I did. There is yeah, glue but on she, there. I think she means like let the glue. Yes, for sure. You know what? Of course, I'm trying to rush things along here. I think we've got it. By golly, I think we've got it. It's on there. Yes. Whew. That was quite a process, wasn't it? Lots of advice here. Good okay. advice. Maybe glue them and clamp them. Then show us the table while the swags have a chance to dry for a while. All very <laughs> practical advice, I, everyone. I am going to do that. You know what? And Melissa says, why don't you glue it first? Then when set, add the screw. <sighs> because, <laughs> oh, you know, you guys have great tips. What would we do without you here? How have I stayed in business all this time? <laughs> That's what I'd like to know. How is it possible? It's a Christmas in July miracle. And no men necessary. That's right, Shannon. How is this even possible that I have somehow managed to survive all these years of doing stuff? What do you mean? <laughs> like, oh my gosh. Sometimes you can do better than survive. You can just... Um, Sometimes when you get all no, in a tizzy, I'm just, I know, like when I'm looking for something, um, I get all in a tizzy and I can't think straight and I can't find it. So sometimes I think when I, you get flustered, today. yeah, you can't think straight. So everybody's like thinking of the thing that you can't. All right. Well, you know, uh, I never was a good process person. <laughs> you know what's so funny to me? Several of these lovely ladies have said like, no men necessary, no men needed. And... YouTube is asking me if I want to hide that. I'm like, no, I don't want to hide that. Oh my that. gosh, isn't that funny? So there you go. We're going to let this set up, and then we're going to move on to this table. <laughs> How about that? And we'll come back and, and Where did you get that things. idea? <laughs> um, thank you to those of you that shared that idea. Yes. I am so glad you did. All right. Oh, yeah, it's a full moon tonight, Melissa. That's ready. That's it. That's the problem. Okie doke. Here's what I've done. We did this in our private inlay group. Mm -hmm. um, and I ended up, up putting a couple coats of sealer over this, our spray sealer. All right. So now what I want to do is I'm just... I did a little bit of distressing um, along the edge here. I love that table. Or the desk, I guess. Yeah, right? it could be anything. So I, I distressed this right back, revealed some of the wood underneath. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a very, very quick and light coat of my Fusion Tough Coat, all right? And the reason that I can do that on the inlay, I know, I know. Yes, because you missed it with 50% water, 50% polyurethane. Thank you. Maybe I'm best at doing this and not constructing things. I think you are good at constructing things. I've seen you do it several times where I was very, very impressed. That was a tricky That's thing a very to do. Tricky thing. Yeah, especially yes. like in a hurry. Yes, for Listen, sure. Color me impressed. Oh, well, thank you, Megan. I appreciate that. I you do. know how excited I get when you're using a tool or something. I get so you blown are, away. You're so excited <laughs> that you were afraid I was going to drill No, I, do, I get nervous. I get excited. I get it, proud. Which <laughs> drilling through your hand could have been a distinct possibility. It was very close. <laughs> and I, you were really playing it cool. So the reason that I have sprayed this with a couple coats of my misting spray is I want those pigments to set in place. And be, I don't want to just add my glaze over top of this now. I just want to make sure everything is sealed nicely in place. So I'm just giving it a very quick coat. It is hard to wait for things to dry, Melissa. It's like watching glue dry. <laughs> and no matter how quick or thick it claims to be, sometimes it's just not quick just enough. It takes the time. <laughs> You're right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to glue. glue the top of this table first. And there again, I'm being cautious. I'm, I'm checking to make sure I'm not brushing 
obsessively over this. I want to uh, just get a quick coat on here. The glaze itself is also going to act as a little bit of a sealer as well. Stephanie asks, how do you prevent bubbles on your polyurethane? Bubbles on my polyurethane. Well, um, there's a few different things that you can do. Really dripping over the surface. There you go. Um, bubbles on polyurethane on what? Let's let's answer that first. <laughs> what are you? Well, this is I usually have a little snack while I'm waiting for something to dry. She said, <laughs> I as wish a, I knew she goes, as a little reward. <laughs> you know, so that is the cutest thing I've ever heard. Guess what, Melissa? You know what? That's my problem. I completely forgot to eat lunch today. That's you ate I, that whole salad. I know, and it's sitting in the fridge. Oh, that's <sighs> sad. Yeah, so that's my brain. I'm in a brain fog. She yes. reminds me of Francis the Badger. That's how something she would say. <laughs> Does anybody read the Francis the Badger books oh, to their they kids or when they're little? They are my very they? favorite. Yes, you are really flinging that tub coat all yeah. over the place. Are you getting wet? That no, but I'm just it's like dripping off the side. So just make sure you keep touching. I that. did. Um, I think some of what you're seeing is the green paint. So the table, the color is Bohemian Blue mm -hmm. DIY paint. Yep. I will add a link here. And then it's the chateau inlay. Yes, and the bottom I did an apothecary and I'm gonna go crazy. I'm gonna put some of that olive um, uh, pentart glaze or gel, antiquing gel over the bottom of it. I'm dying for you to use the turquoise one. Oh, I know. Okay, so I have a good even coat here. Stephanie, and thank you, Arlinda, that table is beautiful. Um, when I applied on a smooth surface, I've used it on metal and also chalk paint, and for some reason I get little bubbles. Should I use a brush or a sponge? I used a sponge. You know, I think that, um, again, it depends on what kind of brush you're using, which I know that's hard she to She used hear. a sponge. Oh, you used a sponge? What kind of sponge? Not don't you don't want to use like a dish sponge a, or one of those or black a, the black um yeah throwaway disposable sponges you don't want that either or a beauty blender don't use you that could, we act, actually that might work really <laughs> really just dab it on <laughs> right um so I'm looking to see Megan can you grab some of our fusion um um the microfiber pads. We should have some down here yep. in our overstock. There's no such thing. <laughs> there's um, there's a couple of ways that you can apply this. I typically use a brush, that's just me, and I brush it out. I'm using, and I'm just really watching for any bubbles to appear. But you can also use like an applicator pad for top coat. These are great. Um, if they're so great, why don't I use them? <laughs> Stephanie <laughs> said, I use the black disposable throwaway sponge. Yeah, they're so bad. Yeah, those are bad. They're too spongy. So those, though, the foam applicators aren't just used for um, at, applying this. They're also, we usually, you use them when you're applying, like, the stain and finishing. Stain and finishing oil. That's when I typically use them. But, um, but they're really good for a uh, top coat as well. And the microfiber, of course, is going to give you a much sleeker finish. But again, I mean, I think that, you know, you practice with what you have. I'm going to be honest with you. Well, no, I'm not going to lie, but um, <laughs> is, is that in all of my years of furniture painting, I, I typically kind of use what's at my disposal and what works best for me. And I use these little inexpensive brushes for my top coat, but I brush them out. Now, I also want you to keep in mind that I am not a super perfectionist when it comes to top coats <laughs> like this. What, Megan? Kathy said, I bought foam cushions and I'm cutting them up for applicators. Oh. And then Stephanie said, oh, I have foam Christians. I'll try that, Stephanie. And she said she meant cushions. Yes, yes. Keelan, you're using beauty blenders, you mean on your face or you use them for crafting? Beauty blenders have changed my life with my makeup application, I do want to say. 
thanks to you two. Um, anyway, um, so you, if you were going to use a sponge or a rag to wipe on like a, a piece of an old t-shirt or something, um, you would want to dampen it first and then and have it like smooth and wrinkle free, like fold your like a t-shirt into a pad if you wanted to use it as a wipe on poly. I, I don't know why that stresses me out. It's probably great. I've never, I'm telling you, I've never been a fan of like wiping on poly. I just, I find it um, just a little quicker and easier for me to do what I'm doing right now. So that's my story. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about any of, anybody else? Like, what do you use? And I'll be honest with you, uh, again, I would never lie. Um, if I am painting a piece of furniture, I very rarely use top coat over my pieces of furniture uh, because Fusion has a built-in top coat. Now, I do use a sealer, either Debbie's DIY, um, Big Top, or if I, I interchange, um, or if I use the Fusion, and I have a piece that is um, done with DIY chalk paint, I, and I want to seal that in place, what I did here down on the bottom is I actually gave this um, a coat of sealer. Okay, this has a coat of Big Top over it down here on the bottom, all right? Okay, that looks like a very thin coat you put on the bottom, right? You wanted some of the wood to show through? Yeah, that, um, uh, not... yeah. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna be glazing. I'm gonna be adding a glaze. <laughs> you know what? I, I, is that more of a wash, or? I didn't paint this. That's the bottom of the table, ma'am. <laughs> you and I are gonna have a discussion. I later. didn't paint it. <laughs> I know you okay, did. Okay, so. But I'm just saying, like, that. So somebody, the, whoever not painted the time this. To point that out. Who, <laughs> whoever painted this will not be watching this video. We can be sure of that. Not today. Or any day. All who right. Would it, who would it possibly be? I'm going to tip The this. only two people I can think of will never watch this video. Is that right? Yeah. All right. So let's see if we've got, I'm going to move this back a little bit. Wow. Megan. I'm just, now that I know it's not supposed to be like that, it's all I can see. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> but the glaze will help. Let's remember that you can put an additional coat of paint over anything. <laughs> it's a great, to. yeah, because you never know. What well, again, I really thought it was just a, sometimes you do do, like, a, do do, do do, do do, uh, you do a wash of paint. Do you see what I'm saying over here? Yes, I, I, like a white wash. I understand what you're saying. Okay, so I didn't know if that was intent, that it was intentional. Well, we're gonna, we're just gonna go with it, okay? Love, I love what you've done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we're gonna use or what whoever has a done. little Pentart <laughs> antiquing gel. And I love this color because I, this to me seemed a little too bright for this, and I wanted to bring out some of those olivey tones so that are tone in down the, in the background. Those of you that are going to be doing our pumpkin and urn class, this is something that we're going to be using on that project. So now you can see how I'm going to use it. On another project okay so I'm just gonna pour some out and when I use a glaze I like to have um, I like to have some water ready I have never really watched you use this one. really I mean I've seen you use many a glaze many, many, many a glaze. glaze right now I feel just like I could eat a glaze of donut I bet I'm sorry you want me to bring you your no, salad I would, I'm not gonna eat on camera I would love it no Okay, so have some clean water ready and have a couple of wet rags ready. And then I just poured out some of my glaze onto the, uh, onto my plate here. And then I just say a prayer, Lord Jesus, I just pray that this will look good <laughs> and that I can do this without fail because okay. I've never done this on this before. Wow. Okay. 
Now, I do want to mention something that's yeah. off topic that I'm just noticing here, this eye level, but I was noticing it from afar as well about you, is that since you've been wearing your new sneakers, which I'm happy that you have and it's good for you, that your calves have looked more defined than usual. <laughs> and I'm not you. kidding. No. I've noticed. I don't know if it's something about the little lift. It's like a, maybe yes. giving you a little more. <laughs> Mommy's had a very <laughs> special um, <laughs> it was very project special. going on <laughs> to <laughs> fix my feet. But I've just been noticing when you walk, I say, wow, look at the gambles well, on that one. I've, already, I've always had nice You always have calves. a nice set of stems. <laughs> I come from both, two parents with actually very nicely defined calves. Anyway, <laughs> but they're looking especially defined lately. Okay, so what I've done, I've taken my brush, I'm dipping it in water and then into my glaze to make it a little more watered down. Remember, you can always add an extra layer to this. Okay, fingers crossed, everybody. Let's let's pray that this looks good. I know it does. Oh yeah, it looks amazing. It's perfect. Okay, so we're not going to leave it like that because that would look like my mom's, you know, our mom's antiquing that they oh, did you back in the... To... <laughs> you know Grandma's in the Thousand Islands, so that's why you're feeling free to say that. And then I'm going to wipe back a little bit and kind of pounce and... That's all it needed. Get, give this just a little bit of aging and texture. I might let it dry just a touch longer, but you can use this um, to define edges, to work in like darker, deeper crevices, to create more depth in there. But I was feeling like um, we painted the, the base with apothecary, mm -hmm. and I just felt like it was a little too bright with this. And I Love it. wasn't in the mood to mix paint, so I thought, oh, that beautiful. It just, that's what a glaze is for. It just tones it down. It does. It, it's, it just gives you a little extra something. Love. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to continue to apply this to the legs because I want this to dry just a touch more before I start to remove it. But you do have to watch. Watch when you're using a glaze. Everybody wants me to zoom in on your legs. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm again. kidding. I just, they want, she, they do want me to zoom in on the table a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> you are right they really do look good though. I'm not kidding. Well, thank you. Since I haven't been able to go to TRX. Or your um, usual tanning sessions. I don't know what it's Not anymore. Is that better, Lourdes, though, that close-up? Of the table legs, just to be clear. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> Can we just forget that that thing with the resin yeah. happened? Can we just forget all about Again, that? everyone loves when you mess up, Mom. I seem to be doing that a lot lately. Well, and I decided we give I the people little, what they want. I needed, I needed to redeem myself with yeah. glazes after that cherub incident. Yeah. On our live on Which is now completely fixed. I, yes, I completely redid it. Completely redid it. So then, if you feel like once this dries, if you want to add a little bit more um, glaze over it, you could. But I like how it tones down and gives you a little bit of an olive. It's truly perfect. Just that olivey look. But not too olivey. But not too olivey, no. It, it's like the right mix of olivey. So I'm just going to be working back and forth here. And doggone it, I'm going to end up finishing up today with something that's still not finished. <laughs> Do you guys remember? Remember the, the era of antiquing? 
<laughs> yes. You do? You, I never did it. How do you remember I, that? I know it that when was I when I was a child. I know it when I see it. Those antiquing kits. Oh my gosh. I can remember my mom doing that so much. Oh. It just looked dirty. <laughs> <laughs> this might end up just looking dirty. Who knows? Well, in those smudgy spots, I don't care for that. On the inside of another one. Yeah, I'll get there. Can you see on camera the difference that this is making? Yeah. Good. Absolutely. I think the key is just getting it um, the right, like getting the right drying time. Yeah, no, Leah just said, Leah said, perhaps the Basement Chronicles will be more than 52 episodes. Oh, gosh. I do. I I'm waiting the, for it. The Basement Chronicles. We're expanding. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're not. <laughs> Absolutely not. We're trying to get rid of stuff. I'm about ready to have a fire sale, Mary said. Wow. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I'm, I like the way this is looking. Yeah. And you do have a little bit of playtime with this once you get it on here. Yes, you can email Stephanie. Questions like that are good to email to mom. Um, ellenjgoods at gmail.com. Actually, or info. Yeah. Well, not this kind of question. Oh. Okay. What she want to know? I'm more of a customer service now. representative. I'm not <laughs> giving advice on what to do with a piece. Oh. Oh no, you, Kaylin. Oh, I keep saying Kaylin. I Please know. switch your name to Arlene down here. Please, yes. Um, she choked on Captain Crunch when she was watching this before. What? If you're going down, that's the way to go. <laughs> do you know what? I do love Captain Crunch. I haven't had it. I don't know if I've ever had it. I'm not a big cereal freak. No, I know. I And you know what? And I know I've mentioned it on here before. I love Lucky Charms. Yeah. I do. That's one thing. I think they're gluten-free. What, Lucky Charms? Yeah, because no. I know. Yeah, no, they are. I think really? Hattie's, that's one. Like, the marshmallows. The that Hattie's been having is Lucky Charms. Maybe just the marshmallows. No, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. We'll have to check on that. <laughs> I like this. I do too. I like that grunginess that it adds to it. But not too much. But not too much grunginess. Grunge adjacent. So really, I'm just wiping and blotting and tapping on here. What? Tell me more about the strawberry bread. Oh my gosh, I just did it again. Arlinda. Can you look <laughs> I feel like usually I'm pretty good today. I'm just let's just for the heck of it see what this looks like over the Bohemian blue. <gasps> I'm just gonna try right here because I can always wipe it back. I don't know why would you do this. It's great. I'm no. just looking. Mm -mm. Actually, it would not be bad. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the other fusion. What do you mean? I'm going to use a fusion antique Why? all over it. Just to give it, again, a little bit of dimension, a little bit of... It's very dimensional as it is. It's a very subtle change in the tone. Which I'm not opposed to, Megan. It's not necessary. Anybody ever made appliques from candy molds? Interesting. Should I stay close up, you think? Which help me with that. Yes. What can I do? I want to get that on there. Is it on there? Well, let's get it straight. Yeah. Here, can you put a tip? Or I'll tip. Okay. okay. I'll push forward a little bit. Perfect. So 
so sorry. I've always had to see me on camera so many times today. What a day in the basement. Okay, here is, um, you want to check just to make sure they can see. I'm looking at it right under. Okay, so here's why I'm also going to use a little bit of glaze. When I did this table, I had quite a bit of um, missing inlay right here. It was a little bit too texture or too much revealed of the paint underneath. I removed a little bit too much. I didn't, my inlay didn't adhere as well, however you want to say it. So I had to, I touched up quite a bit here with some, some matching shades of paint. All right. So I do want to tone that down because they don't really match everything else, but it's not like awful either, but it is going to tone down the top of this. and make it all a little more cohesive. So this is the Fusion Antiquing Glaze. And again, what I can do with this, I can apply with a wet brush, I can apply my glaze. And I don't really want that like just brown glazy look going on. So I will just take a damp cloth and I'll blot. This is going to create a little bit more of a mottled look instead of a streaky like brown film over the top. But it does tone down my paints quite a bit here and I like that. It is a beautiful tabletop. I'm going to wet my brush again and I'm going to apply while this is still wet because I don't, I don't want a, a line here. I want to make sure that I'm working into a wet area. I shoes. truly am not, but I know those sneakers weren't cheap. Those are medical grade sneakers, if I've ever seen them. <laughs> and they're doing their job. All right. The, she used apothecary for the base, Patty. to this side. And again, I, mean, I don't know if it's real super obvious to you guys, but it really is making quite a difference here. Just toning down some of those colors. No, the blue background is not part of the inlay. That's bohemian blue with the e the inlay uh, put into it. Oh yeah, this is good. This is good, you guys. I like this. I will still put um, I'll still put a finish over this. I really want to make sure that it's extra extra sealed on the top. You want the customer service email? Yes, hold on just a sec. Uh-oh, now you're in trouble. No, I want the email. Please. I welcome it. Good. Okay. I've had some very suspicious emails from time to time. Remember them? <laughs> this side real quickly that 
is the email for customer service and HR. So I'll take field any questions, complaints, and concerns through that email. Address. Can I do the same? You sure can. Okay. You can expect an email later. It's fine. All right, there it is. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. That is beautiful. That's beautiful. Yes, let me, let me go out now, maybe. Oh dear. You said, oh dear, right when I was tapping that deer. Oh my gosh, can you believe it? I can't believe it. All right. Let's uh, let's grab this mirror. What are you going to work on now? How are you going to do I'm that? I'm going to show how I'm going to glaze around. But what are you, literally, what are you going to put it on? Do you want something? Okay. It is not showing. Okay. Dry yet. I'm not going to mess with that side. We'll, we'll mess over here. Okay, I'm going to zoom in, Mom. Mm -hmm. Just so you're aware. hands are a glazy sticky mess. Do you need a wipe or anything? Nope, I'm good. I'm good. Well Rebecca and I booked an impromptu campsite at Lakeside for the weekend for us just for us and the kids. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be very nice. I think the first thing that I want to do is I want to add a little bit of distressing to this mirror. These, Isn't that have, great? these um, have already been painted with a few coats of Victorian lace, which is the background color here. Cheryl, the legs of the table are apothecary DIYs for Link. I was thinking earlier how cool this would have been if I had used the cracking paste on this mm -hmm. mirror. Oh, yeah. It would have been really cool. Can't really you still? Great. Uh, no, I'm not going to bother. I mean, by the time I do all of this, I think it's going to be enough. No, I, when I'm distressing, I don't ever use an orbital sander. I know some people do. I just feel like it gives too much of a fakey kind of look. You know? So I always come in just with a bit of uh, sandpaper. And then I can be a little more um, intentional about where I want my distressing. This is going to be the mirror that never ends. I'm looking at it and thinking, how pretty would this be with a canthus scroll right here? Oh, yeah. Just to finish this off. I might do that. Mm -hmm. Not next week. We're moving on. <laughs> but maybe you'll show it next week. So I do distress and kind of chip up the edges. I will give you a one tip though, ma'am, with fusion, you want to do your distressing within the first 24 to 48 hours is best because unless you use like these wax to create a resist, but man, this stuff dries so hard yeah. that you got to really work at it. You mean the fusion? Yes. Yes. Or put like beeswax or... Yep. Um, or you can also do it when it's not totally dry, right? No, I don't do that. You wait until it's completely cured? No. I said 24 oh, to 48 sorry. hours. I know. The mold is perfect. I, I think it looks so pretty. But don't you agree? I think it needs kind of a flourish right here. And I'm thinking a canthus mold would be would do the trick. For sure. I don't know that it even needs it. But I think that would just make it take it over, over the, the top, top in yeah. a good way. I really love this mold. Oh my I gosh. I want to make a pretty little like cottage garden sign. And with that, yeah, I'll do that. And then I would use, um, then I would use, I 
would use cracking paste with that and maybe some really soft um, inlay or inlay like a uh, cottage room. Oh my god. I, all right. I've got, I've got another project in mind, but again, not going to do it. Not going to do it here in the basement. Stephanie said, I've been refinishing a 200 year old floor. Five years ago, I used a power sander. Now I'm using a razor. Oh my gosh. That's a job, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's such a job. Okay, and just wiping away my dust. I, again, I don't care too much if there is dust and grit on here um, that works itself into the glaze. It does not bother me a bit. And I am going to wet this, wet my brush. I would be so nervous putting a glaze on those roses. Why? Just because there's like, it go, they go in so deep, some of them, like. That's why I'm gonna be very careful yeah. I know you'll do it perfectly, but I would be scared. Basically, I'm tapping into this mold. I want it I want the glaze to reach the deepest areas and then I'm going to wipe away what's on top. That is not one of the IOD molds. That is a mold that mom had cast out of a piece that you got in Michigan? Yeah, I, I bought it at an antique store. It was in the in the basement of their, um, like all their old architect architectural stuff and trim pieces and old windows and all of that. And it, there was this beautiful little um, wood piece in there. And I said, I want it. <laughs> I want it. So as long as I've got my brush wet when I'm tapping into my roses, I have a little bit more drying time. But what I want to do now is I just want to take a cloth and very softly remove the excess from the surface. So you're creating some depth in those recessed areas with the antiquing glaze. And I just, all of a sudden, it's like they show up. The roses just show up. I Though think, I honestly didn't hate it just white on white. Oh, no. I think that was pretty, too. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's definitely the most annoying surface you've ever worked on, huh? Why? You don't hear every squeaky, <laughs> shaky. Well, now you will. I apologize. <laughs> I like the way this looks. I do too. Looks great. Every time you use a glaze like that, I'm always amazed, like how it goes on and what it looks like when it you comes know, off. You know, yeah, glazes are really fun to use. They are, and they pretty much are foolproof, other than that cherub that I did on Monday <laughs> and sent those of you in our text group. But I redeemed it. I, I redeemed myself today um, yes. and fixed up that cherub and it, now it totally is, it's cool. But look at that mold. Look at the detail in that mold now. So cool. Can you guys see it? Yeah, I mean, I can. I'm not even looking at you. Oh, okay. So, so pretty. You guys, oh, we're continuing Christmas in July upstairs on Mondays and Fridays. I can't believe it's only the middle of July. Um, we have a lot more projects to do, and we are um, we're pretty excited about what's coming up <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> and I can't wait until August <laughs> for, so we can at least do some fall projects I've been really really dying to do some fall stuff but I'm thinking we're going to be doing a wonderful Facebook live private group all on those hymn boards and 
ways to work with those that maybe uh, we didn't share. Some new ideas. So oh, I can't wait. Yes, I can't wait. And those of you that are in the Pumpkin and Urn workshop, probably next week I'll be sending out an email. Watch for that. Yes. That'll have, um, that will be a, kind of a call to action to uh, find that Facebook group and request to join so that I can get you all in there and we can start talking about our project. Okay, that's pretty. Really pretty, Mom. That is really pretty. I like that a lot. And it is. It's it's tricky. You've got to like. I've got kind yeah. of a big brush here, so you would you would really probably use um, a smaller brush. Another thing you could do is you could glaze this first, and then put your roses on, and then reglaze over that. That might be a nice. Um, a nice option as well. No, what I think I might do is I would just dip, go ahead and dip the mold in the glaze and then just rinse it off. Would you? <laughs> would that work? No. But I'm going to pull out the liquid patina that these are dark and decrepit. I'm going to get it for you or you Yes, I've got it. And I'm going to show you how we can intensify some of those deeper crevices with the Debbie's DIY. I use both of them interchangeably um, depending on what my project is because the colors like, are different. The colors are different. Exactly. Yeah. But I think I think I love using a glaze like when we're doing a cracking paste or when we're when we're doing um, something that has a lot of detail because it really does settle into those lower areas and Right, it'd be hard to do that with a wax. Like, you wouldn't be able to get Oh, it. gosh, it would be a nightmare to try to wax this. It really would. And again, you can go as dark or as light as you want. What's our time looking like? It is 2.27. Oh, my gosh, we've been on so long. Time to move along. You've been doing a lot. I know I have been. I don't, I don't like to go past an hour, but anyway. Okay, so here's the decrepit dark and decrepit. Dust, yeah. You could use decrepit dust, right? You could. It, it should, it has to settle into something, like a wax or... Um, okay, so now I have my dark and decrepit. Let's just add a little, huh? I got a little too much water in that. But it's really a grungier, almost dirtier looking brown. Decrepit even. It really is, yeah. But you can use that in those deeper recesses. And honestly, I kind of do these in layers too, so that, um, so you're not, picking up one layer that you just put down when you apply the next one. But I think with that, you guys, we're gonna let this, this rose mold dry and I'll screw that in from the back. I'm gonna zoom back so you can speak to them properly. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And I'm gonna continue to add glaze over my piece and blot out the areas that are at a higher plane or toward the center of my piece so that I've got that dark, the darker glaze settling into the cracks, all of these little, little areas as well. But it's just gonna tone down my whole piece. So cool. And again, this one, the Debbie's is just a totally different shade of brown. Which I like. I like it too. All right, you guys. We will see you on Friday. Friday upstairs. What are we doing? Oh, I, don't I think know. we're doing jewelry. As long as Shirley's oh, yeah. feeling okay. We are doing jewelry. And won't that be fun? It's going to be fun. There's no doubt because it's Christmas fun Friday. Jewelry. And we always have fun on Fridays. We do. Yes, we do. Whether we like it or not. Yep. Leah, if you're here still with us. 
Can you bring your Boughs of Holly mold and your Snowflake mold? Yeah, please, Leah, please. can you bring those? <laughs> Thank you. That would be awesome. All right, All right. Guys, see thanks ya. Thanks for hanging in there. Bye.